Happy 4th of July. I've invited my friend Davy to cook this meal with me, and we are very glad to share this holiday meal with you. I'm so glad to be back in Diksha's kitchen, and we're going to make a wonderful 4th of July picnic meal for you. I'm going to be cooking the dill potato salad and a wonderful new addition, a sesame, an Asian sesame coleslaw. And Diksha, what are you going to make? I will make sunflower burgers and corn on the cob. And with the meal, we're going to serve whole wheat buns that I will teach you how to make in a different cooking show. And we serve also different condiments. And for dessert, we'll, ha we'll have two kinds of desserts. Ice cream with berries mm -hmm. and non-dairy coconut bliss. Sounds wonderful. So I will light a candle. Little tea light. And Davy, would you lead us in a prayer? Sure. Then. Beloved Lord. Beloved Lord. Great masters. Great masters. Bless us as we prepare this food. Bless us as we prepare this food. That it may be filled with the joy and energy. That it will be may filled with the joy and energy. Of this wonderful national holiday. Of this wonderful national holiday. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll begin with our dill potato salad. We start with the recipe calls for six red potatoes cut in one inch cubes. So we have five of them already cut here. And I'll show you how to cut one just in case you have any questions. We use red potatoes. You can also use Yukon potatoes, but they have either the red or the Yukon have a thin skin. So you don't need to peel them. So we start by just cutting the potato in half and then turning it over on its side, and then cutting it in half again. And then you cut it in three chunks. And that gives you a uniform one inch chunks. Okay, now we're gonna put our six potatoes in the pressure cooker. You want me to take? That would be great, Diksha, thank you. And we're gonna cover them with water and bring the water to a boil. Here, here's our water covered. Pressure cookers are just wonderful tools. You've seen Diksha use them throughout these cooking shows and I think we need a little bit more? Just a little bit. Okay. This is good. Okay. So I'm gonna okay. turn it on for her. Okay, cover. Seal it. So we're going to bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about three minutes. That's all, three minutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're going to hard boil two eggs. Now, um, you may think, oh, well, what's the art of hard boiling <laughs> eggs? But actually, there are some tricks to it. You want to put the eggs, and it's good to start with nice fresh eggs, in a little saucepan and make sure that they're uh, completely covered with the water. And then we'll turn on the heat. And when the water comes to a boil, we will turn it down and let it simmer for 10 minutes. And then when that's done, we uh, turn off the heat and rinse them with cold water and let the eggs sit in the cold water for a few minutes and then peel off the shells. So while this is all cooking, we will uh, uh, be ready for our next step when we add all the nice seasonings to the potatoes. Well, we've simmered our eggs for 10 minutes now, and now we've drained them, and they're sitting in cold water for a few minutes. And Diksha's going to get us started on our wonderful 4th of July sun burgers. And also the potatoes. Oh, the potatoes are uh, in the pressure cooker, and we're just waiting for the pressure to come down so we can drain them and begin the next step of the potato salad. OK, so we'll start on the sunflower burgers. You will love them. 
So we start with the sunflower seeds. We have here one and a half cups and I will put them in the Cuisinart and I want you to see that I will grind them but I will just pulse because you want the texture still to uh, remain with, you don't want to make it too fine. I think, I think maybe I'll do a little bit more. When you do the on, you ha it's hard to gauge, so it's really better to pulse it. Okay, I have to close that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. That's all. So I will see the blade that I'm using here to chop the sunflower seeds. Put this in a bowl. And now I will add all the great ingredients to it. This is half a cup of grated carrots and half a cup of finely chopped celery. Put that here. Is the spatula to help me? And we have a third of a cup of minced onion and you don't have to saute it ahead of time. You just add it in. A few more things. Let's put this, David, would you put this down? Thank you. And we have here one teaspoon of garlic powder. We add here. And one teaspoon of dried basil. Actually, I grew up the basil and I dried it. Oh, and I, then I crushed it. Nice. Okay. Two tablespoons of fresh parsley. It's minced. Nice colors mixed together. I'm going to just hold this up so you can see how pretty that looks. Two tablespoons of brag. You can also use tamari if you prefer. And you can use two tablespoons of melted butter. Or you can use two tablespoons of sunflower oil. And I decided to use the oil today. Looks like a beautiful salad, so we're making burgers Spread out of a salad. Underneath, clean this here. One more. So, one more ingredients. Meanwhile, mix this. The ingredients is, you can use two eggs. But if you prefer not to use eggs, you can substitute it with two tablespoons of ground flax seeds. You mix it with about, I tried it, four tablespoons of fresh water. And you kind of mix it together to create the consistency of egg mixture. Okay, so you We're can crack our eggs and then just beat them slightly. We're using a little wire whisk here rather than just a fork. It tends to uh, keep the eggs from splattering out so much. So I can use the spatula here to make sure I get everything. It's really quite simple, isn't it? And you'll be surprised. This is an absolutely delicious mm -hmm. burger for vegetarians. This is one of the favorite lunches at the Expanding Light Retreat, having burgers, buns, and fries. And they freeze very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to keep some in my freezer for emergencies. So this is our mix. And now we'll make the patties. 
So let me bring this here. So Davy, well, this is my new brush. Oh, lovely. It's a lovely brush. I turned the oven on, which I forgot to, ta to tell you, to 375 degrees. So if Davy can just oil, I put a parchment and I do put oil. You would think, why does it need both? Because somehow the, the burgers do freeze. Yes. Uh, they stick to the, yeah. um, to the parchment, so this is better to or spray or just lightly brush with oil. So this is our mixture. So you can do the, um, the burgers in two ways. You can just spoon it with a spoon or I have the mason jar ring and you can use two size. But this is what I think most people would like mm -hmm. this size. This is, might be too, too small. small. So if you use this ring, which is about three and a half inches in diameter, it will make about seven patties or burgers. Call it burgers or patties. So here's how I do it. I'll just move it a little bit. And I take a spoonful, put it right in here. And I press it down. I can use a little bit more. David, do you like to to grind your sun sunflower so there's still texture? I usually grind like, them a little bit more, more than fun. that. Yeah. Uh -huh. But either way, it's delicious. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just a matter of taste. I like the crunch of the uh, sunflower. Oh, perfect. Here we are. So you see, when you use this wow. ring, it makes them more uniformed. Uh, I've more. never done it this way. Really? I usually just spoon it and I'm get, you've converted me. This is a much better way to do it. It's much easier than to freeze it too. Beautiful. Okay. It's two. The thing I love cooking with dishes, it's such a, she makes everything so beautiful. Every, every, each little burger, sunflower burger is just perfect. Thank you, David. <laughs> Here we go, three. Four. So because this is a bigger kind of a, a tray, there's enough room, but if you have to fill it up, you just want to leave, like you see here, about an inch. See? The good thing about the ring, you can just slide it a little bit. So we have, let's, if you can turn it around, it'll be easier for me. Great. All right. Here we go. Press it. Can use a little bit more. You know, this might just use six, actually, mm -hmm. not seven. This is great. Like six patties. We don't want it to be too thin right. patties. So you usually yep. serve like one per person, unless you're a big person and you need more than that. <laughs> Did you say you take them when you're traveling as a little you know, snack? I do. <laughs> I uh, actually, uh, my husband and I were traveling, and I, you know, you go to the airport, and I always get hungry in the airport. So you want food, and I like fresh food. So I had some leftover burgers, and I took them with me, and I had some lettuce. I think I put a little bit more here. I had romaine lettuce. So I took the lettuce with me, and I pulled out the burger, and I wrapped the letter, I put the burger inside the uh, romaine lettuce, and it was a wonderful way to have a sandwich instead <laughs> of having bread. It was delicious. So I think we had set. So this recipe makes six burgers. 
and I will put it in the oven and I will bake it for about 20 minutes on one side and then I'll flip them over and then 10 to 15 minutes on the other side. And you like it to be medium to brown color and then they will be ready. All right. I'm putting it in the middle of the oven and I can put this to 20 minutes. Well, now we're continuing on with our potato salad. We've uh, cooked them in the pressure cooker and here they are, all, they're still warm and steaming as you can probably see, our six red potatoes. And while they're still warm, uh, so that these different ingredients can, the flavors can absorb into the potato salad, we're going to add our different ingredients. So we're going to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, not garlic salt, because we don't want to have extra salt in it. We will have a half teaspoon of regular salt. It's kind of moist, so we'll use our little spatula to get it out. You want a small spatula? No, it's fine. It's okay. fine. And then we'll add one uh, stalk of celery, which has been nicely minced. And let's get it all in there and an eighth of a teaspoon of dry mustard, okay? A lot of recipes for a potato salad call for your regular wet mustard, but if yeah, you... I can take a look at these. Okay, and I'm gonna mix this up. And if you notice, it has no oil at this point, uh, because that we add later. If you add the oil, the, we'll be adding some mayonnaise and some oil. If you add it now, it... Um, Get, it absorbs too much into the potato salad and it will mm. be dry. But if you let it cool a little bit before you add those other ingredients, then you have a nice moist dr dressing for the potato. So we're going to let this just sit now and cool before we add the oily ingredients. Now here are our two hard-boiled eggs that we showed you how to do it by letting them uh, simmer for 10 minutes and then uh, immersing them in cold water. And we, they, uh, we peeled them already, and they came out just perfect. Sometimes uh, one of the banes of making hard-boiled eggs is when you lose most of the white. And by doing it in this way, by not over-cooking them. Let's see them, how oh, perfect. perfect. Can you see how nice they are? <laughs> it's just white with the yellow with no blue tinge. And so we're going to chop up our two eggs, and but we won't add them just yet. We add them later when we add the oily, the mayonnaise and the oil. What do you, how do you usually cut when I, you're at home? When I'm at home, I use a, uh, what they call a pastry cutter. Mm. It's a handle with uh, different blades and you just put them in a bowl, the hard boiled eggs, and then you just go like this, but a knife works just fine. I don't have it. A friend of mine also uses, uh, she just grates the eggs on mm. a uh, vegetable really? grater. Yeah. It works. We're using those mats just because it's 4th of July. We wanted to bring more red and blue. Great. Do little escapees here. Okay, so now... We're, we're going to let the potatoes cool before we add the rest of the ingredients. So here the sun burgers are almost ready one side. Here it is. It's been 20 minutes and I will take them out and let's see what we have. Oh, they're beautiful. So here are the burgers and I will flip them over. See, they are now one piece. All right. I think the egg is a little bit, I don't know if it's because I didn't mix it well enough. Um, it didn't happen to me before. <laughs> <laughs> Those things happen. I think it might. It might be because if you grind it a little more, that the finer some meal 
sunflower meal absorbs the egg. So I think then I should have um, ground the uh, sunflower a little bit a little more, bit but do you still leave it a little bit? Yeah, uh, you have yeah. to, otherwise it's... Uh, I, it become too mushy. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put it back in. That's a technical cooking term, mushy. <laughs> put it back in. And how long would you say, 10? Yeah, let's set it for 10. 10, and if it needs longer, then we'll put it for longer. Okay. And now we'll just keep waiting for the potato to cool to add the rest of the, of the ingredients. So now the sunflower burgers are ready. I cooked the other side for about 15 minutes, and you can see you want it, as I said, golden brown. And because I did not chop the sunflower enough, didn't absorb enough of the egg. And so what I'm going to do now, you always can resurrect things. So <laughs> here we go. I just cut a little bit. Here we go. So this is our sunflower burger. And so I will continue doing that. Meanwhile, Davy will tell you about the next dish. Okay, so we're going to uh, go on now and prepare our Asian sesame coleslaw, which is a very nice variety from the typical American coleslaw. And we start off with two cups of finely chopped green cabbage. We've already prepped that for you. And now we're going to uh, chop two cups of red cabbage. And when you're chopping cabbage, you start by uh, removing the kind of discolored, heavy leaves on the outside, washing it well. And then you want to cut out your the this white core, that because that's just doesn't have much flavor and uh, is dense. Baby, so, by the way, you see how easy this is coming beautiful. out. Beautiful. You see, it didn't stick because <laughs> she oiled the parchment. Cooking is a lot like uh, karma, you know, you <laughs> do a little work in advance and then it pays off in the end. So now we're going to start by uh, finely, we put the cut side down, finely chopping our red cabbage. So we just, it's, I'd say it's between a, probably a quarter inch thick. And, you know, if you're in a hurry or lazy, you can do this in a food processor, uh, okay. shred the cabbage. But uh, now here's kind of thicker ends, which we're not going to use at the very bottom mm, either. Here's one. Yeah. So we'll get rid of those. These we can maybe reclaim. So we've shred, and then we'll make it into like bite-sized pieces. So we'll cut it about in thirds this way. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we'll just measure this in our two cup measure and cup just to give us an idea how much we've got. Well, I think we've got more than we need it's here. okay. Why don't you take this and I'll move this away. Okay, so we're going to add this. It's very pretty colors together. We'll take this heavy piece out. Okay, so you got everything you wanted? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, take this away. Very good. Okay, now we're going to add the... Thank you, Diksha. We're going to add the last vegetable, which is one cup of grated carrots. We've already prepped that for you. Excuse me for a moment. I will. So even before we get started, Beautiful. look how pretty the colors are. Okay, so we're going to just mix this so it's uh, the red and the green and the orange are all together. I can see some bigger pieces. We'll move, pull those out. Here is our oh. sunflower burgers. We're getting ready for our picnic. Leave it right here for now. Okay, so now so you can get this. rid of that. Now we're going to mix the dressing for the Asian coleslaw mm. in our blender. And Diksha, I'm going to ask you to help yes. me with this. Okay. So you say the ingredients. I okay. give it to you. Okay. So we start with four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and four tablespoons of water, four tablespoons 
of olive oil. What kind of olive oil do you like to use? To Extra choose? virgin, the okay. best kind. <laughs> okay. And to the last drop. Yeah. And then, here, I'll help you. Before, right? Four tablespoons of cashews. These are just whole cashews. And now two tablespoons of sesame seeds. And two tablespoons of dark sesame oil. Two tablespoons. Okay, I think it's one. Oh, one. You're a thank you, Diksha. One. I'm going to use my fingers. Okay, okay. It's clean. And where's our lid? Oh, it's over there by you. Okay, and then one tablespoon of agave nectar, a wonderful sugar substitute. And you can see the two bottles, so you can see what we're using. And then a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, not garlic salt. Okay, and we're Lots starting of ingredients. with yeah. We're starting with a half a teaspoon of salt. We can adjust it later, but this is a good basic amount. Okay. And then just a pinch of cayenne. Since this has a little sprinkle top, we're just going to give that one. Oop. Well, that's good. It's fine. Yeah. Might have gotten a little, might be a little spicy there. Okay, now we're going to put the top on. And we're going to turn this on. on. Looks good to me. Okay. Then we just pour this lovely dressing with all these nice ingredients that you saw. Why don't I pour it in? You can mix yeah. it in. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So if you don't, um, if you don't grind the blend a long time, you will have a little bit, a little bit chunk, chunks a little bit of the cashews, mm -hmm. which is actually adds a nice crunch to the salad. So this is a, it has, it's a non-mayonnaise uh, coleslaw. Most of them have some, or uh, many of them have some mayonnaise. So this is a, a vegan variety. There is a, a cook at our Expanding Light Retreat. His name is Kalidas. And he loves this. He actually gave us this recipe. So after we mix it, what are we going to do? Then we'll j you can taste it at this point to see if you want to add a little more salt. But as with most healthful cooking, it's better to go low on sodium than excessive sodium. We're so mixing up. It looks beautiful. Okay. Let's just take one little taste, see if we need to add. Somebody wants to come? <laughs> wow. It's so delicious. Good. Good. That is a great recipe. Okay, so now we will... Oh yeah, so this has to sit for about a half an hour before you eat it. So we're going to put it in the refrigerator and cover it for about a half an hour. And then before we serve it, we'll garnish it with fresh chopped cilantro. About a quarter to half a cup, mm -hmm. which adds a nice green to it. So we're going into the final touches of yes. the 4th of July meal. And now... I will steam the corn. So I took off the husk and what they call it, the silk. The silk. And so I will do it in the pressure cooker. You can do it also in a regular pot, which will take much longer, about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. This will take two minutes. You'll see. I have a steamer basket this time, and I have another one which you can put this down like this and put this on top. Wow. So I will not use this. I will use this one. And I will put at the bottom, hopefully it won't touch the corn, just about two inches. I'll try. This is good. And I will put them in. Need to fit, I think I can fit four. Here we go, let's see here. In the top, I'll just put it right on the top. I'll close.
close the pressure cooker. I'm going to try. Let's see, I think something is sticking. That's it. Now it's better. Lock Got it. pressure. Seal it. Turn it. Bring it to a boil. And then simmer it, as I said, for two minutes. And the corn will be ready. Meanwhile, they going to finish. Well, we're going to finish our dill potato salad. So remember we added the apple cider vinegar and some seasonings and celery. We've let it cool. And so now we're going to add the final ingredients. So we're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. Just let it drizzle on down. Follow Diksha's last drop principle. <laughs> then we're going to add a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise, which uh, is actually, it, it's very low amount of mayonnaise mm -hmm. for most potato salads, so it's very nice. So it's not a, a heavy uh, caloric dish. We'll mix that in. And you know, with potato salad, um, I don't know if, when we took it out of the pressure cooker, I don't know if you noticed, the potatoes were maybe they seemed a little overcooked. But for potato salad, I think I prefer to have them a little overcooked because they kind of, mm -hmm. they, they kind of melt together then. Yeah. So you could even just simmer it for two minutes. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to add our two chopped hard-boiled eggs. And if you cannot have eggs. Oh, yeah. You can use um, sunflower, sunflower seeds, about yeah. half a cup of toasted sunflower seeds. And let's mix that all in. Now, if you remember when we were making it, we added the salt early on. But at this stage, you can taste it and see if you like a little more salt to it. Starting to look like real potato salad, isn't it? <laughs> and now, so that this dish earns its name, we're going to add the fresh dill. You can also use dry dill, but this is a little more than one tablespoon fresh dill that's been minced, or you can use about one teaspoon of dried dill. But the fresh dill, uh, it's one of my favorite herbs. There's nothing quite like it. And then you just sprinkle it on top, and voila! Beautiful. We'll mix it in a little bit so the flavors can, it's not really a garnish. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you want the flavors to blend. Yeah. And if you want to garnish it, a nice little uh, sprinkle of paprika gives it a little pretty red color on the top. Yeah. So now this can, uh, sit in your refrigerator and the beauty of this meal is you can really make most of these things the day before mm -hmm. and the flavors will actually come mm -hmm. out better. So here we are. This is our uh, dill potato salad. So now we're almost ready to serve. The um, corn just need about an hour, about a minute and 40 seconds or so. And here are the buns that I already made. And you can see the tops. I froze them. So I will now heat them in the oven. I turned the oven to 350. And it might take 5 to 10 minutes. Great. We'll check. So these are whole wheat buns? These are whole wheat buns. And I will show you how to make them. I have a special program, cooking show, on yeasted breads. In that yeasted bread program online, you will be able to see how to make the buns. So, of course, fresh is better, but here we are. Do you usually turn the tin full up or? I don't, but I'm okay. not sure I know which. Uh, I've never heard a definitive statement yeah. if you're supposed to do it one way or the other. all kind of ideas. OK, so I'll put it now in the oven. As I said, I turn it on already. And I will leave it, let's start with five minutes. And we're ready then to serve the meal. 
So here is our 4th of July meal. And Davy, it was a joy to cook with you. Thank you so much. That's like great. This, my dear. This was an easy meal to make, wasn't it? Very easy. Just, and it's going to be delicious. Good. So we have our veal potato salad. See a little bit of the Asian coleslaw with the cilantro. And we have the corn on the cob with the sun burger with the whole wheat bun. And we have some lettuce and tomato and condiments too. So you can use any condiments that you like. We have the ketchup, the mayonnaise, the mustard. And we have two kinds of dessert. We have the coconut bliss and we have the regular ice cream. And we have them with berries to match. So, you know, 4th of July, Americans Independence Day. This is a celebration of the nation's freedom for foreign rule. But at a deeper level, it's about personal freedom. Freedom from past habits, mistakes, and self-limiting ways of thinking. Freedom to claim your highest potential as a child of God. So as you prepare the 4th of July meal, try to do it with a sense of inner freedom and a joyful determination to be an expression of your own highest self. So we will end with Davy guiding us through a wonderful affirmation about freedom by Swami Kriyananda. Thank you, Diksha. And thank you for inviting me to your kitchen to make this beautiful meal. So let's affirm together. You can repeat after me. Uh, this affirmation is from Swami Kriyananda's book, Affirmations for Self-Healing, if you like to find about more of these affirmations. So you can repeat after me, but as you repeat it, keep your mind deeply concentrated so that these thoughts really permeate into your consciousness. Let's affirm together. Nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Let's repeat it once more. Nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. My soul like a weightless balloon. My soul like a weightless balloon. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Soars upward through skies of eternal freedom. Have a wonderful 4th of July. May you be blessed with inner freedom and joy.